Um, given the interest of time, I will only talk about Storm. That's where we have three rigs drilling at the moment up in, in Nunavut in Canada. But we are a three um, asset um, company. We have two in Utah, West Desert and Copper Warrior. Um, but most of our focus at the moment is that Storm. But look, West Desert, just, just very quickly, is down the road from Bingham Canyon. You guys would recognise that as one of the world's largest copper mines. Um, it's, we've got robust resources there, underground and open pit already. It's the only indium deposit in the US, uh, jaw compliant indium deposit, and they import all their indium from uh, China, Bolivia, Sweden and Canada. So there's a lot of interest from the government there uh, about you know, um, yeah, us monetising the indium component of that deposit. Uh, only 10% of that mineral system is explored, so there's a lot of potential. It's a porphyry-related scan. The other one down the road from is Copper Warrior. It's uh, a traditional sediment host of copper, only 15 k's from the second largest copper mine in Utah. So again, it's a it's an opportunity. We work on those in the off season when we're doing storm and seal, um, but I'll talk about storm today. It's worth spending a bit of time on this slide because a lot of people ask us we're an Australian company, but assets in the states and Canada. But how do you do business up there? But people when they think of Canada think of forests and bears, and lakes and snow. Um, we got all snow, but we don't um, have any of the others. And, and this just highlights how we actually do business up there. So some key points are uh, it's a desert. So we get less than a metre of snow every year. Uh, we have 500 metres of permafrost. So you can see that that adds a lot of benefits. There's no ants, there's no mosquitoes, there's no animals, there's no trees. So it's very effective to do on-ground exploration and mining-based activities there. Uh, it's essentially fly and fly out. So we don't have to spend 13 hours in a car driving to central Australia. We fly from a place called Yellowknife, which is just in, in south of, of the Storm Project, and we fly all our equipment in and our people. So it's essentially a camp there, 24-7, got a camp, 50-man camp on site. And you can see here is also the local community. Uh, a lot of these guys work on our property and, um, and help us out with the logistics side of things. So none of it, none of it is, uh, uh, look, it's, it's People don't understand how much goes on up there, but essentially we're right in the centre of a historical mining district, very, very long lived di district. So we're not alone. There's some very big mines, the Kati Diamond Mine, there's gold um, base metal mines, the Polaris and Nanocivic Mines both operated over 20 years. Polaris at the time was one of the most successful uh, and profitable mines for Tech Cominco at the time. Um, and as you can see there, the base metal mines are located on the, on the water. That's important there, so shipping, is the best way to move material, then trucks, and then obviously by roads. So we're on a designated shipping lane. That's the way they, they actually service the, 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 the properties and, and the towns up here, is by moving things by ship. Um, the, the mines down the south, Ikati and, and the gold mines, et cetera, you can fly your content, uh, well, your product out essentially. So that's why they're able to be inland away from the coast down there. Current Mary River Iron Ore Mine is currently operating up there, and they do many, many ships every year um, through there. So it's shipping about three to four months of the year, so, um, and, and you're mining 24-7, so all year round. Now there's been a little bit of, you know, people talk about Canada and there's, you know, I see some negative comments about permitting, but yet not all M&Ms are yellow, and, and like every state in Australia and every district uh, and, and territory in Canada, they're all different. So this is, like I said, it's an arid environment. Um, where we are is one of the leading new districts for copper, said host of copper, so this is a said host of copper opportunity. So, you know, comparisons of that is the DRC in Canada, Botswana and Copper Belt, um, and, you know, Cooper Schiefer, and, uh, you know, all bodies like Kamoa, Kakula, et cetera. Now, this is government, none of it, government data. We haven't made any of this up. So, since 2000, 14 projects have been permitted. Um, the average time is only four years to permit. Now, that's including pr some very long lead projects, like 10 years to permit, but also some projects in there in that data set are one to two years, depending on complexity. And again, it talks to the simple nature of what we aim to do here, mining and processing. And it's with 10 past and present mines. So this is uh, a very busy mining district, and that's the Mary River Iron Ore Mine you can see there in the background. So what do we have there? So this year we, we put out a maiden resource. Um, we have copper um, deposit, four copper deposits here. We have the three southern ones are, are steeply dipping and, and fault-related deposits. Um, and the cyclone deposit is the larger of the two, of the four, sorry, is a very laterally extensive flat-lying um, opportunity. Starts at 25 metres from surface. 
this is what it looks like roughly in the open pit. We, we did our resources based on the yeah, economic parameters. It's not a zero cutoff grade. We, we used actual uh, a $3.75 copper price. Um, since then, we've been doing some other work and we've, we've now got three rigs drilling on site. You can see there there's two distinct domains to the ore. There's a very high grade component, plus 1.5%, and a lower grade component. All of this is economic, um, but it gives us optionality in the processing. We just drilled uh, this year, um, last week actually, outside the pit, 100 metres to the south. You can see that small lobe down the, the magenta coloured um, lobe that's not in the pit there. We drilled uh, south of that and hit 32 metres of mineralisation, um, including some very high niton grades in the, in the core of that. So we know this is going to grow. It's already 12 million tonnes this deposit, so that'll go northwards. You can see a historic, another historical hole uh, 250 metres to the north of the pit. It's also hit mineralisation. So that's not it. I mean, this thing's going to expand. So, you know, we, what we found last year is that um, in exploring around the fault system to the south, we made two discoveries. We made the thunder, but essentially 50 metres of 3% copper at 30 metres depth, uh, and Lightning Ridge, uh, 30 metres, about 2.5% copper. Those are not in the resource. We're drilling those now. The initial results from Lightning Ridge we published last week show that that's, that's extending very much similar to the Chinook. It's across the, the, uh, the, the gully there to Chinook, so that obviously a, a, a mining solution for those two. Cyclone is expanding. Um, this slide also illustrates the... Uh, the EM and IP anomalies we have there. So every EM sorry, anomaly we've drilled in the past has turned out to be high-grade copper, and as you can see, there's quite a few that we haven't tested yet. We did make another discovery this year, um, the gap, where we hit eight metres at over 5% copper. That was an EM anomaly, um, and we've got many more of these to test. The storm's one part of the, the puzzle. Essentially, it's 5% of a, uh, a belt that we own 100%. The, the, the copper horizon here has been mapped over 110 kilometres. Um, we have copper sticking out of the ground at a tornado and blizzard. That geology is identical to storm, um, so we expect to see more discoveries down there. Um, 50k south, we have a, a prospect called Tempest, which we have copper and zinc exposed over four kilometres of, of strike. Um, th there's a, a zinc horizon as well, so we have the zinc seal deposit, very high grade, but quite small at this point in time. That's actually related, it's been scientifically proven to be related to the Polaris deposit in terms of its gen genesis and, and the mineralisation event. That zinc horizon also goes down to the south and, um, you know, whether we're seeing the copper and the zinc at Tempest is a confluence of the two belts coming together or whether we have um, some protozoic rocks at depth there and more of a, a VMS signature, which would give p two um, potential deposit models here. So very exciting. There's a lot to do. This is going to be a very long-term project, you know. Um, but the real unicorn for us is what we can do with this mineralisation in a mining sense. This is a quick cartoon. Like I mentioned, this is a, a sedimentary hosted copper system. So very similar to the DRC, um, style of deposits. It's a stack system. We drilled four deep holes last year. At the same stratigraphic horizon, we hit copper in all four holes up to 2.7% copper at 300 metres vertical depth. So that suggests to us that Cyclone is part of a stack system. We have multiple layers. So we'll be doing more exploration there and next week we'll be drilling one of the deep holes into one of these exciting targets. So this is the, the, the low risk and, and the low capital potential and, and it really the, the low hanging fruit for us. And this comes with us being extremely lucky in the type of mineralisation where we get and also the host rock here. So the mineralisation is dominantly chalcosite, which is 80% copper, um, and the host rock's dolomite, so calcium, magnesium, carbonate, essentially, and self-buffering. So, as you can see there, with, with the picture down the bottom, very different physical, uh, optical, and, and um, you know, gravity and, and density um, differences. One's twice the density of the other. Um, chalcosite's 5.5, and do dolomite's about 2.6 to 2.8. So. As you can see, it's, it's, it's very amenable to be able to simple gravity beneficiation techniques, but also ore sorting. So we've tried this. We, we had this piece of core. When, this was the, the light bulb moment for us. We crushed some core down to half an inch size, and we, we managed to get a 60% copper concentrate on the, on the, the left here, and then a, a lower grade copper, not a waste rock. It's essentially a stockpile. And what we've done lately, and, and we hope to give an update on this very soon to the market, this is extremely exciting. 
We've been able to take um, bulk samples from Cyclone and Chinook deposits. We've tried that down to uh, low-grade ores, so we've tried ore sorting and beneficiation down to 0.6% copper, and we can uh, safely say that this is going to be, at the standard average grade here, a very amenable to be able to make a very um, competitive DSO product, similar to many uh, copper concentrates that you see leaving Australia, and also a lower grade, uh, essentially an ore stockpile for future processing. We've also tried to float this material to see how it works. It makes a 42.7% copper concentrate uh, with very, very high recovery as well. So um, this is the unicorn for us. Obviously, this is the, essentially a, a road-based quarry uh, style operation with crushing and sorting and beneficiation, very low capital potential here. And you can imagine this kind of operation would be very, very high margin if you're moving copper uh, in concentrate. We've also very advanced in the, in the permitting side of things here. We, we're moving this very quickly. We've, we're also already a year ahead in terms of the environmental and some of the community liaison and all the other bits and pieces here. As you can see from the photos that I've showed, that you know, it's very benign in an environmental sense. Um, we started the hydro, hydro work and accumulating that two years of baseline data that you need to permit here. So look, in, in a nutshell, we're doing two things very clearly here is that we uh, want to expand the resource, the maiden resource that we put out this year. Hope to get a, a, a resource upgrade at the back end of this year with this, you know, spend the whole year drilling. Um, and we're also doing the exploration side of things. So people talk about the Lasange curve. You don't want to be on that when you know, you're developing and exploring, you're going up and then developing, you're a boring explorer, developer, sorry, developer and miner. The beauty is we can actually negate that curve by exploring. We've got 110 kilometres of exploration potential here. We're the sole owners in the area. Um, so we own 100% of the belt with our joint venture partners. So uh, lots to do here. It's a very long-term project. If we can get cash flow in the short term through a very simple mining operation and processing opportunity, that means that you know this, that'll fund this for the next 20 years. So a lot of work in the background is going on in the project development space because of that. So we've started the mining studies, we've started the economic studies, um, we've got the, all the other environment uh, type activities underway as well, so very advanced there. And look, we think this is going to be a transformational change for American West Metals. I mean, you know, when's the, where's the next Australian copper producer coming from? Um, hopefully it's Canada. So uh, thank you for your time. And uh, I'll wrap it up there. I think it's probably drinks time.